I heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Scout Fantasy Show. ScoutFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Scout Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. Dr. Roto, get out the insurance cards, get out the copay. The office is open, my friends. All right, we just finished week 13. We're going to get to week 14. I will discuss uh, the week's games. Uh, I've got some news for you right here. Uh, This just out about 10 minutes ago. James Conner from the Steelers is out this week. He has an ankle sprain and not a contusion. And the Steelers said that the injury is more significant than they thought originally. So this is big. Uh, You're losing Conner now. And uh, I want to discuss something about this that, you know, I mentioned to Scott Atkins yesterday when we spoke that I think there needs to be another waiver wire before week 14 in the high stakes leagues. I think going a month without being able to make a pickup is very difficult because, look, I've said this many, many times. The best team doesn't always win a fantasy football championship. But with injuries the way they are now, it's like the team who can survive with, with, a, with a starting lineup will win a fantasy football championship. And that just shouldn't be. So whether we need to expand rosters to 22 or whether people can make pickups before week 14, what have you. Now, I agree there shouldn't be pickups during uh, playoff time. That's unfair. Now, in my own home league, we have a rule where you could have one pickup on Tuesday, one, that's it. Because I don't want to leave people with nothing. But, you know, look, this is a high stakes league. There's a lot of money involved. I don't think you can have pickups. But I think we can do that. We can make it extend it one more week before week 14. I think that would really help people. Could you imagine? I'm one of these teams. I'm like number three or four overall, and I have James Conner. Thankfully, I have Jalen Samuels. I picked him up two weeks ago and spent money on him, and now I'm going to need him. Now, do I think Steven Ridley's going to play? Yes. Do I think Samuels is going to play? Yes. Am I hoping for 12 points? Yeah, but I'm not going to win $50,000 with 12 points. I'm just not. I'm going to win $50,000 if I get 24 points from James Conner. I need James Conner to come back. I really do. And at this point, if I had to venture a guess, I think he's probably going to be out for a couple of weeks. Let me see here. Uh, the Steelers play on their schedule. They're the Raiders, Patriots, and Saints. I, I've got to think that they want to be, he's got, they're going to keep him out the, with, this week. They want him to be ready for those two games. So that's the, I expect that to happen. All right, so let's take a look at this week's games. First of all, the Bears and the Giants. Uh, what, what a game. Uh, Tariq Cohen, great, great play. Uh, the Bears, a terrific comeback. Uh, I think that surprised everybody. Once again, the Giants, look, you got to close out a game. I mean, I'm glad the Giants won the game, and I know there's some Giant fans who are upset, and you can't be upset that your team won a game. I mean, you got to be happy about that. But I think at the end of the day, you, you got to close out this game. That game was done. It should have been over. And you let the Bears back in with Chase Daniel. I mean, Mitch Trubisky's there. I think they're winning that game. Uh, Ravens and Falcons. So there's some concern this week. And, and I will get to this probably later this week. People are concerned about uh, Patrick Mahomes playing the Ravens this week. Should you be concerned? Yes, you should be concerned. This is a tough game for Patrick Mahomes. However... Patrick Mahomes is as good as it gets. I can't worry about Patrick Mahomes. I just have to assume he's going to have a good game. They're playing at home. He's a fantastic quarterback. He's got weapons galore. I just have to assume that maybe... Now, the difference is he's not going to have a 400-yard and five touchdown game. But could he have 280 yards and three? Sure. Will I take it? You bet. You bet I will. All right, that, that's just what's going to have to happen. Broncos against the Bengals, A.J. Green out for the year. I think that's another very big loss for fantasy owners. I mean, people were counting on A.J. Green. Uh, I was listening to the guru this morning, and he said he passed up Tyree Kill, and he passed up other players to take A.J. Green. I don't know why people do that. AJ, what, is, what is A.J. Green? A.J. Green is a good player on a bad team. You're going to pass up Tyree Kill to take A.J. Green? In a million, million years, I would never do that. Ever. I take the good player on a good team. But he's not proven. Yeah, whatever. Tyreek Hill's proven to me. Proven he's pretty freaking awesome. Hello. All right, Rams are playing the Lions. Play the Lions. 
game was closer than I thought it would be. The Lions uh, lost it in the end. Todd Gurley with a sensational play at the end of the game, if you guys remember, where he didn't go in for that touchdown. That's just smart. Todd Gurley doesn't care about your fantasy football team. I wish he did, but he didn't. And he went down and he he didn't, didn't, didn't score. He scored later, but he didn't score at that moment. That was very strategic. Rams have a tough matchup this week against the Bears. Uh, if I have Jared Goff, if I have Cooks, if I have everybody in that game, I'm worried. Th- those are two good teams. I don't know whether that game's going to be in the 30s. I'm worried. Cardinals against the Packers. Now, look, a lot of people are talking about whether or not Mike McCarthy should be fi- should have been fired. I think the answer is yes. And I'm going to bring it down to this. I really believe the Packers quit on McCarthy. The Cardinals stink. Epically. They are terrible. They are terrible. And the Packers at home couldn't come up with a game, a game plan, to win this game. And you lose to the Cardinals, which is shameful. What do I need McCarthy to do? Be a lame duck for the next four weeks? You know he's done anyway. Get him out. You know What, what do you want to do? Whack him after week 17? Does that make it any better? Maybe it makes it better. Maybe it gives him a chance to like get his belongings and say his goodbyes. I guess so. But I don't... He was going to get fired no matter what. But you can't lose a game like that. And you've got to show that your fan base, that we're not going to settle for mediocrity. That was terrible. Really was. All right, the Bills against the Dolphins. Uh, by the way, Josh Allen played a very good game. And I don't know if you saw the end of that game there. Charles Clay blew it. All he had to do was catch that pass and the Bills win that game. I mean, really, that's how close the Bills were to winning that game. Zay Jones came out of nowhere. I think the Bills are onto something. I know they're 4-8. and eight. I get that. But that's a, th- that team is getting better. And I'll tell you, Allen is going to be a good player. He's got nobody around him. Charles Clay stinks. Kelvin Benjamin is bad. Zay Jones showing a little ability. LaShawn McCoy on the way on the way down, not the way up. I mean, and they're still trying and they're still keeping it close. All right, the Buccaneers against the Panthers. Somebody had said today that they think Cam Newton's injured. I don't know, man. I just think Cam Newton has bad mechanics. I've said it from the time he entered the league. There's back foot cam, there's throw it by the arm cam and no leg cam. He's just not that good a quarterback. He's just not that good. And I think when the Panthers get in trouble, it, it, when they're ahead, Cam is great. When the Panthers are winning, there's nobody you want more than Cam Newton because he can throw well enough, but he can run. And he runs and he holds the ball and he, and he, he does everything you want him to do, right? He milks that clock like nobody else. But when they're down, he can't come back because he's just not that good. Christian McCaffrey's that good. He's amazing. I mean, he's single-handedly keeping people in fantasy leagues. For the Buccaneers, Jameis Winston played really good football. He did. He played really good football. Godwin played great. I mean, Mike Evans didn't do much, but Godwin and Humphreys looked great. So everybody was talking about the impending disaster of the Jaguars, but the Jaguars shut out the Colts at home 6-0. Andrew Luck didn't even get 250 yards passing. I mean, there you, there you have it. The Jags' defense isn't dead. I think the problem with the Jags' defense was that Blake Bortles was so bad that they were, he was getting them on the field two more. You have to have sustained drives, which Cody Kessler was able to do. Give the Jaguars defense a little time to, to have a breather, and then they'll play better. Okay, the Texans are just playing at a very high level now. Lamar Miller playing at a high level. Uh, Deshaun Watson at a high level. Deshaun uh, De- Hopkins, DeAndre Hopkins at a high level. Just playing very good football. Uh, Baker Mayfield was bad, but I'll tell you, I like him this week. I do. I like him this week against Carolina. I do. I think he's going to have a good week. So don't lose hope with Baker Mayfield, but the Texans are playing really good football. I'll tell you this. I don't think the Titans played very good football, but they did in the fourth quarter against the Jets. The Jets just kept on kicking field goals. And, you know, they say it all the time. If you're an announcer, you can't get the three points. You need the seven. Well, the Jets kept on getting three and three and three and three and three, but you got to find the end zone. You don't win in football with field goals. And the Titans stuck with it, and they played well. And Marcus Mariota finally got out of the pocket. You can't keep this guy in the pocket. He's not a pocket passer. He's just not. He's got to be mobile. If he's mobile, he's successful. All right, the Chiefs beat the Raiders. Uh, So just two seconds about Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt, I don't believe, would have been cut by the team for his actions. I think what he did was not only did he hit somebody, he lied about it. 
He told the Steelers that he was that he never left his hotel room, and then I'm sorry, told the Chiefs he never left his hotel room. And sure enough, the minute they saw that video, they're like, "This guy lied to our faces." Now look, I say to my kids all the time, "You better tell me the truth now, because if I, if you, if I find out you're lying, you're finished." And then my son looks at me, and then he's got his face, and he's like, "All right." And I already know the answer anyway. Any good parent always knows, knows the answer anyway. I already know what my kid did. I just want him to admit it. When your kid can't admit it, that's when you know it's a problem. When Kareem Hunt can't admit it, it's a problem. You know, you say, look, I screwed up. This is what I did. I'm so sorry. Please help me. That the Chiefs could have fixed. But covering up, never a good idea. It never works. So now are we worried about the Chiefs running game? No, I think Spencer Ware is fine and Damian Williams is fine. And Charkandrick West is fine. I mean, as long as you have Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey, uh, good things will happen. Just a tough game this week against Baltimore. All right, the Vikings against the Patriots. Did you really think the Vikings were going to win that game? Seriously? Did you really think the Vikings were going to win? Because I never did. You don't beat New England in Foxborough in December. End the story. Okay? You just don't do it. <coughs> I mean, everybody wanted to love the Vikings. I didn't. All right, the 49ers and Seahawks. I love the Seahawks. But... Um, you know, kudos to Dante Pettis, who actually, I should have had that game. I should have had him in daily. I really should have. The guy played at Washington, and the game was in Washington. Who? look at what happened. The guy had some incentive. But the Seahawks are playing very good football. <coughs> very good football right now. So they look like a playoff team and a contender. And Wilson is, is effective. He's not throwing a lot, but he's throwing effectively. I was absolutely shocked, shocked at the Chargers-Steelers game. At halftime, you're like, Look, this was 23-7. This is a rout. And all of a sudden, the second half was like a different game. How did the Steelers lose this game? I think the Steelers will look back on the season and go, this is a game we shouldn't have lost. When Antonio Brown goes 10 for 154 in a touchdown, you don't lose that game. But they couldn't stop Justin Jackson. I mean, they couldn't stop Keenan Allen. They couldn't stop a lot of things. It was a problem. And finally, the Redskins, man, when Mark Sanchez is out there, you just know your team sucks. All right, Carson Wentz looked good. Adrian Peterson, by the way, had that one great run, but Golden Tate finally looked like he fit in, and and there you have it. Um, but the, the Eagles played pretty well, and now I think that division comes down to the Eagles versus the Cowboys. All right, so remember, we'll take a look at uh, other things. So it says here, Mike Tomlin says the Steelers are going to use running back by committee. I think that's going to be the case. Samuels and Ridley probably get about 15 touches each. Uh, Matt Nagy says that Trubisky's feeling better. Uh, Chris Carson says that, uh, sorry, Pete Carroll says that Chris Carson is going to play this week against the Vikings. We will take a look at this week's news and notes as we move forward, okay? I promise you that because this is the critical time. These are the critical days. We will get you to a fantasy football championship, okay? We will get you the latest and greatest. But I'm going to tell you this. You're going to have to trust me on one thing. And here's it is. We're going to have to make the moves necessary to win. If that means we start guys that you're not familiar with, we do what we need to do. These are the fantasy playoffs. We can't play around. We look for the best matchups. We start the guys who are going to help us get there, and we win. But right now, it's time to put away the insurance cards, put away the copay. The office is closed, my friends. Wishing you all a great day. I'm back tomorrow. This is Dr. Otto saying be well and take care. Thanks for listening to the Scout Fantasy Show. There's never been a better time to join the Scout Army. Visit ScoutFantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO for two months free. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time. Go Scouts!